Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and this is the final video of 2022. I try to make a video every year where I talk about the tools that really helped me do my job better or make it more easier or just stuff that really made me happy and I enjoy using. So I'm gonna run through cameras, lenses, studio equipment, audio gear, physical tools, and other things I just really enjoyed this year. Before we jump in, this video is not sponsored by any of the companies and gear we're going to be talking about, but it is supported by those of you who have helped me out by purchasing camera guides and LUTs. Check the links in the description to learn more, and thank you guys so much for the continued support. And we're gonna start by talking about cameras. By far, my favorite camera of the year has to go to the Sony a7 IV. I actually just picked up my second one, and I have just been loving this camera. Sure, it's not perfect. Rolling shutter is a little bit of an issue, and if you're going to be filming outdoors in extremely hot environments, you might run into some problems. But for me as a studio shooter, this thing has been phenomenal. I love having a full frame oversampled 7K down to 4K sensor. For YouTube, I really think this is kind of the dream camera. And if I need to shoot stills, it is a fantastic hybrid thanks to that little switch right below the mode dial so I can quickly jump over to stills and video while having all of those settings separated. The image coupled with my S-Log3 LUTs, which you can check out in the description, make this one of my favorite cameras I've ever used. I'm finding you can pick these up for around $2,000 used, so a fantastic camera, and really this is the thing to beat going into 2023. So that's the first camera, and the second one is going to have to be the FX30. Man, do I love this camera, and when it comes to the price, it's nuts what Sony is giving to us here. Image quality, form factor, and having a APS-C sensor, I think, is a really good pairing with the a7 IV. So, really a big fan of this camera. I'm going to be doing several videos on it, including a lens guide, so stay tuned for that here on the channel. Moving on to lenses for full frame, right now on the Sony E-mount, the Tamron 28-75 has just been a rock star this year. I also have loved using the Sony 35mm f1.8, which has been my main lens that you've been watching me on for, I think, almost all of this year. For crop sensors, specifically cameras like the FX30, this Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter is just perfect. You can see how small it is, even with this larger adapter on the front of it. And I love the range, 18 to 50 on APS-C is a great range to go with. And the minimum focus distance on this thing is insane. So if you need to get close to your subject, you're just not gonna beat this lens. If you wanna learn more about this and other lenses for the FX30, stay tuned. I have a monster lens comparison coming up. Next, let's get into camera rigging. And by far my favorite thing this year, and apparently your favorite as well, is the Ulanzi F22 rig system. You can check out the full video, but in short, the F22 system is a quick release system with a ton of accessories. It allows you to build all kinds of different rigs, and there's no knobs to tighten things down. Everything just snaps in place, is rock solid, and just a fantastic system, no matter what you need to rig up. As an example, here's my FX30, and here is another item we'll talk about in a second. I can simply grab this thing, slide it onto the camera rig and leave it there. It's already locked in place. If I need to release it, I just push a little button and it pops right off. There's no need to have two hands to be able to add a monitor to the top of your camera. So big, big fan, really, really nice stuff for rigging. Another rigging accessory I have been loving this year so far are the new small rig V-mount batteries. There's two different sizes. I've done a full review, tons of connectivity. You can charge them over USB power delivery, just really, really solid little batteries that can be used to power just about anything. So definitely one of my favorites out of the year. Another two items I'll be talking about in a future rigging video is this, the Mars M1 monitor and the 4K transmitter receiver kit from Hollyland. What's so special about this combination is that you have a monitor with a built-in transmitter and receiver, as well as the option to purchase separate transmitters and receivers. So what does that mean? Well, I can take this monitor, throw it on a camera, and transmit it to this receiver on another larger TV or production monitor, or I can throw this transmitter on my camera and send that signal over to this monitor with maybe a follow focus with an assistant or something like that. Just a lot of flexibility using this system and it's pretty affordable and the monitor is really fantastic. You can load LUTs on it. It has a really nice touch screen interface with HDMI in and out, power in and out, just 
really well thought out kit from Hollyland. I didn't make a lot of audio purchases this year, but by far one of my favorite is the Rode VideoMic Go 2 that came out at the beginning of the year. This is a stellar little microphone that has so many uses. You can check out my review, but it's hard to beat the sound quality, the sensitivity, and versatility of this little guy. There's two other pieces of audio equipment that I really enjoyed using and actually make and sell, which is kind of fun this year. And one of them is going to be the Go Lock for Rode Wireless Go transmitters. It's got a really nice little locking knob to be able to keep your microphones from unplugging while also protecting the body of your Rode Wireless Go. And then the second item is the SM7BS, which has been a very popular microphone mod kit. The black kits are back in stock and we also have a new white color as you can see here. I had a really fun time working on this project and have many more planned for upcoming videos. In the lighting department, there are several things I really enjoyed this year. The first was getting a hold of the Aperture 600X. I think that is the light to beat going forward. A super solid, super bright, bicolor light that's pretty much perfect for documentary filmmakers or YouTubers who need a lot of bicolor light. I also really enjoyed the Amran F22C. It's a really simple, flexible LED mat that is perfect for booming over subjects and the RGB output on that thing is bonkers. So big fan of that light. And then there's a bunch of really affordable lights that I've had a lot of fun with. One is a simple closet wireless battery powered light that I've talked about a long time ago, but this year I've really started to use these a lot in my backgrounds to add a little bit of interest. And these things are really affordable, so definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen them already. And then I've been using a lot of lights like this, just simple tubes with a built-in handle and built-in battery. These are perfect for little kicker lights and different accent lights in your videos and they don't really cost that much and they're usb rechargeable so just a reminder that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get some pretty useful little fixtures okay moving on to studio equipment there are three things that i've really dug this year and have been using a ton the first is my custom hdmi patch panel you can learn more about this on the video i did about my studio desk setup but in short it's a giant patch panel where everything in the studio is plugged into one place and i can patch them together so if I want this camera to be on a completely different monitor, I simply reach over and change the cables. I don't have to run new cables, cable organize all over again. It's all right here. Another big change for me was a new teleprompter and monitor setup. So I now have moved up to a larger, I believe 16 inch teleprompter, and I'm using a 12 inch Lilliput monitor. This has been fantastic for live streams and being able to display people via meetings, uh, see myself and monitor myself. And I've done a video on that stuff in the past if you wanna learn more about that kind of thing. But it's a dead simple, pretty darn affordable, pretty large teleprompter for the money. And last but not least, I recently discovered a really strange C-stand boom stand rolling thing on Amazon. While it's not Avenger C-stand quality, it is pretty solid stuff. So I've been using those for anything where I need to boom a big heavy light out or for my overhead setup, it rolls really smooth and it gets pretty high and the, the arm extends pretty far. So really great value option if you need to mount a bunch of heavy stuff. Now let's get into the stuff that's not really camera related, but I've just really dug this year. Most of this is gonna consist of tools, but some of them are weird things like this model from Bandai. If you're looking for some kind of prop or just something interesting to have on your desk, they make a ton of really detailed, really high quality models that you can build, whether that be action figures, ships, all kinds of cool stuff. I've been using these in some of my videos and you're gonna see a lot more of those in 2023 when it comes to lens tests and things like that. Next up, we have a tiny quarter inch driver ratchet, which I purchased because there's a lot of times where I don't have a lot of clearance and I need to get in there with a tiny hex tool. And this thing I've used so many times and it's also super tiny and just works really well. Next is a very expensive, but really handy tool if you do a lot of electronics and that is this particular wire stripper. I've owned a lot of wire strippers. They're all pretty good, but this one is really, really special and the action on it is fantastic. So you stick the wire on the end, you go like this and you get a perfectly stripped wire. It doesn't jam like other ones that I've used in the past. So again, not really affordable, but definitely a really fantastic tool if you do a lot of electronics. Another dead simple tool are these one, two, three blocks. In short, they're called one, two, three because on one side, they're an inch, on another side, they're two inches, and on a third side, they're three inches. They also have these holes here and they're made of solid metal and they also have three eighths taps. These are great if you need to hold 
hold something in place while you're working with it. I've also used these to hold up foam board when I'm doing my B-roll. And since they have threads in them, you can also use them with monitor arms. And since they're so heavy, these are not lightweight. Uh, they're a great counterbalance for things like that. So kind of a specialty item, but I can't believe how many times I've used these for all kinds of different things. The last tool I've been using for years and just got a couple more are Prusa 3D printers. I've talked about them on the channel. They're just rock solid workhorses and I'm excited to have a few more in our 3D printing farm. And again, stay tuned for a lot of projects involving making super custom filmmaking gear going forward. And that is going to wrap up my list of favorite new gear for me in 2022. I would love to hear if you guys have recommendations, gear you think I should check out, or just stuff you're really enjoying this year. Lastly, I just want to end by thanking you guys so much for all of the encouragement, for all of the support in 2022. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your year, and we'll see you guys in our next video and in 2023.